Connections, it's good to be with you today. We are going to take another look at the 23rd Psalms. I've titled it, God Takes Us Through the Tunnel. The scripture we're going to look at, again, is the 23rd Psalms, but we're going to see how God takes us through the valley of death, starting with verse 4. Even when the way goes through death valley, I'm not afraid. When you walk at my side, your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. We have had the privilege of living in America that has already gone through a lot of its growth spurts. If you go back into the days, we live in a very historic spot right here. We are part of the old canal systems. If you drive up Route 19, you can see the, uh, the rails, the trail there. Um, you see where the old canal went through. In fact, Houghton has a really unique story. Uh, at some point, we could tell more about that. But we lived in America expanding through canals, but the canals only took us so far. We needed to have the trains that really crisscrossed America on the old canal banks. Is like I said, the rails, the trail, that was used to lay down the new tracks. But as things went out west, they didn't have the river systems to, uh, to move them around. Uh, they crisscrossed the plains, but they hit up against the mountains. And it seems like mountains could have stopped them. For a while, they went around. Then they learned they could zigzag up to the top. Just kind of like our lives, too. We seem to zig and zag. We try to go around things. But what we need to do and it's what they learned to do. And the best way was to go through the problem. And so tunnels were developed. These tunnels are, are really cool to the story in that um, the people had no other choice except to be contained in this car. And they would be at one point seeing the, the bright sun and then almost instantaneously it would go dark and some tunnels would be short. Other tunnels went on for miles and miles. And here's the thing. They had to place their trust into the engine, into the equipment, and into the engineers that ran the train. Now the engineers had a light on the end of their, uh, of their locomotive so they could see what was coming up ahead if there was any dangers. But if you were in the back, you just had to trust that they had been there before, that they were well trained, and they knew how to handle any of the situations that were coming their way. It's kind of the same for us if you really sit back and think about it. We find ourselves, just as the scripture is saying, is that God will walk with us in the valley or the shadow of death. Death Valley is what it was listed in the message. We go through struggles in our life that, that seem to be insurmountable, and we need to have somebody that's been there before, like those uh, men and women who run the trains through these tunnels. It's not their first, as we say, rodeo. They've been there before. They know what to do and how to handle. So we can sit back and have some faith. It's difficult when it's our life and, and our world at hand, though. We seem to want to, to rush through the cabin, and we want to get to the engine ourselves, and we want to become the engineers. The problem is we've never been there before. The problem is we don't know how to run the controls. The problem is we wouldn't know what to do if danger jumped out and attacked us. See, this is where God is so good to us, is that in our life struggles, at our lowest points, it seems that God is with us, the Holy Spirit is indwelling us, 
we are given God's spirit through people who surround us. In other words, they put flesh on the spirit. Let me tell you a story of probably one of the lowest points in my life. I had been married for many, many, many years. And no matter what I tried to do, how to overcome the problem, it came to a point where my life was shattered and I started to go through a divorce and, and was in the divorce. And I needed to get away. I needed to, to center my life and to let God begin to, to soothe me and then to give me a vision for the future. Because at that point, I was lost. I didn't know where to go and, and what to do. And so I called my, my, one of my best friends up, and, and it was Rick. And I said, Rick, I need you to drive me to Pittsburgh. He goes, why is that? I said, well, I've decided that I'm going to take my kayak. I'm going to load it up. And I am just going to float down the Ohio River, and my goal is to get to the Mississippi, and who knows where after that. And, and he took me at my word. He came, got my truck, and we loaded up the kayak with all of my, my food and the camping equipment that I was going to need. And we got to the, to the river. It was, you know, we call it Three River Stadium, if you've ever been into uh, Pittsburgh and, and know where, where the Steelers play, and that's where I put in. And uh, he, he waved goodbye, and I waved goodbye, but on the way down, he gave me words of wisdom, and he comforted me, and he helped me to begin this journey with, with um, just being there as a friend, something, somebody that I needed just to listen to what I was going through. Well, while I was out on the water, it gave me opportunity each and every day to, to be alone and to be with God and to talk to God and, and to allow God to begin to speak to me. But at night, sometimes I would, I would come up to a camp that was near enough to a, to a little town and I could get to a phone and and I would call Kristen, and, and she would be on the other end of this, this uh, lifeline, and she would give me encouragement and, and to help me work through some of the questions that I had. And, and I needed to know if I was going to continue on this trip, if I was going to come back and, and to work um, in, in an industry that I knew that was recreation. And she helped me work through the process of all these different pieces that were coming my way. And it got to the point where I, I got to uh, West Virginia and I got to one of the cities there. And lo and behold, at the dock was actually the Mayflower, uh, the, a replica of the old sailing ship. And uh, they saw me paddle in and I got to talk to the crew and, and, uh, and, and spent the day with them on, on the Mayflower as they were going through all of their, uh, their preparations to get ready because they were sailing the next day for Florida to get refitted because they were going to go across the Atlantic, not back to England, but to Africa so they could show the ship in a different location. And that was exciting. If you know anything about me, this would have been a new adventure. I was asked to go with them. I was asked to, to crew this ship. And, uh, and that was exciting. And, and so I, I had some choices to make. And so that night I called Kristen and, and we worked through the process. And she let me make the final decision. But she gave me some clues to what actually might be more beneficial instead of seeking that excitement, but to actually come back and to face some hard things, to, to face um, the situations that I needed to in my life instead of running from it, but to run towards it. And so with that decision made to, to come home, I called my parents and uh, they brought 
down the camper and we found a way to put my kayak up on top of of the uh, the motor home and and on the way home they gave me more of God's wisdom and uh, and and gave me a security that God was not going to to leave me in the midst of my troubles but would move through them with me and that's what I needed I needed to have these three individuals be the skin that surrounded God's spirit. And so as I was communing with God, I also had somebody to commune with that I could hear, that I, 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 could, I could physically touch. And here's the amazing thing. If I had chosen to go on that trip with the Mayflower, they did go to Florida, they did fit the, the boat out ready for their travels, but what happened was, on their way to Africa, they didn't realize that they were going to sail into a hurricane. A hurricane was going south, but it changed course, and it went right to where they were at, and they had no way to get around it. And like so many of the ancient ships in the past that have gone to the bottom of the sea, to my understanding, not one of that crew survived. That could have been me if I followed my own guiding, my own path, my own direction. Because all I could see was the excitement and the travel that would bring. But because I listened to others who gave me wisdom and advice, I'm here today. You may have gone through trials and tribulations you may have become experienced in knowing what God has done in your life so that when you see others, you can be that voice of reason. But if you're going through a trial, here's my gift to you. Reach out like I did. Find one or two or three people that can walk alongside of you so that when you're not um, alone like I was. You, you have someone to talk to. But then when you are alone, you can hear in the calmness the Holy Spirit talking to you. Because we need both. We need to have people who have the wisdom from the Lord, but we also need to have the Holy Spirit speaking to us and through us. So this is what I see out of this passage, is that God, as we go through our valleys, is there. And then with his shepherd's crook, will then lead us into right paths. But we have to be willing to listen and to go in the direction that God is leading us. Let's pray. Most holy God, we thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for the wisdom that you've given to others through their experiences. Help them to begin to share that wisdom with others as needed. But also open our hearts as we are, are in the midst of the tunnel, as we're in the midst of going through these valleys of despair, that we will let others in, that we will we will open ourselves to others so that we can hear your voice and help us to get calm. Help us to, to sit down and to, to just be, not rushing around trying to fix things, but help us to find those moments where we can be like Elisha up on the mountain, listening for that small, quiet voice. We put this into your holy name. Amen. See you next time.